Hello BSS, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, then just welcome. Hi, my name is Brenda, I do mostly paranormal videos here on my channel, so if that is something that you are interested in, please consider subscribing down below and turn on your post notifications so you do not miss when I post another video like this one. Now, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get right into today's video. Alrighty you guys, so today we are reading some more paranormal stories that were submitted to me by you guys and as always if you want to send your stories into my channel so I can read them here on my channel, please send them to my email beyondbsfparanormal at gmail.com. That is the only place that I will look for these stories and that I will read off of because it's just easier for me to do it that way. Alright, now with all of that blabbering being done let me pull up my email and let's get into story number one all right this story is sent in to me by nick gemmerick i think that's how you say the last name i'm not sure i'm sorry it says hey brenda i'm nick and i recently found your channel and i love hearing other people's paranormal stories it's one of my favorite things i wanted to share some of my spooky experiences over the years with you I don't say ghost stories, but more so paranormal experiences, and I let whoever is listening decide if it's explainable or not. None of these experiences ever really frightened me because I love things like this, haha. <laughs> I also don't think my parents' house is haunted. I just felt like spirits would pass on through, or I just happened to come in contact with them over the years. Other than these specific moments, the house is always very welcoming. I am 31 now, but ever since I was little till about high school, I used to hear my name getting called all the time. It would sound like a loud whisper, like when you are trying to get someone's attention, but you don't want to be disturb anyone else. The strange part was it always sounded like my mom, and I would think it was her calling me. I would go find her and ask what she wanted, but she would always say she didn't call me. It would happen more so when I was little and happen less and less as I got older. Another experience that happened to me in elementary school was when I was leaving a friend's house just a few doors down and heading back to my house. When crossing the street from the next block over, I saw a boy standing in the middle of the street covered in bruises and blood, then he vanished. Could it have been just my imagination? Who knows? Or, or he was really fast. <laughs> Around that same age, I remember waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And when I looked out of my bedroom window, I saw a dark, cloaked figure standing on the sidewalk. I didn't think much of it then, but years later when I watched Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, the death character in the Three Brothers story looks so similar to what I saw. That's the best way I can describe it. Do I think it was death? No, lol. Could it have been a crazy person? Maybe. But it was hunched over with a large head like that character in the movie and looked so strange. During high school, I would wake up at 5.45 every day to get ready. I noticed that all the clocks were stopped at the same time one morning, both electric and battery operated. I thought it was strange, but I just made breakfast and sat at the table. All of a sudden, the chair next to me just pulled out on its own. I just said out loud, it's way too early for this, and continued to eat my breakfast and went to school. You're so savage. Some little things happened during college, but nothing worth going into. After college, I moved back in with my parents. One night, I was laying in my bed upstairs, and I could hear my dad and sister talking downstairs in the living room, when all of a sudden, it sounded like someone was knocking on my bedroom door. It wasn't either of them, because I could still hear them talking downstairs. I was too tired to answer the door, haha. <laughs> Sometime after, I was woken up in the middle of the night because it felt like someone was nudging me awake. When I turned over and looked, I thought I saw a little boy standing there and again I said, ugh, leave me alone, and I fell asleep. Don't mess with my sleep. I could have still been in that dream state when I woke up, so who knows if the ghost was actually real. The most recent wild thing that happened was still at my parents' house. 
I was having this crazy vivid dream. It was my friends and I fixing up this old school that had a tennis court and pool. I could feel that it was a fall day. Cloudy, windy, it felt so real. I went into this garage to get some supplies and my friend came in to tell me that I needed to leave right away because there was this old man coming and if he saw me, he would try and switch souls into each other's bodies. So I quickly climbed out of the window and when I got up to run, I felt a hand on my shoulder and heard the old man say, Hey there. At that moment, I burst awake. It was terrifying. At this point, I was very awake and it sounded like a bunch of people were whispering very loudly in my bedroom, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. At first, I thought it was my phone playing music or something on low volume, but it was on do not disturb mode. The whispering went on for about five minutes, then it just stopped. Who knows where the sounds came from, but it was strange to have this crazy dream and wake up to whispering. I hope you enjoyed my stories and I can't wait to hear more experiences from other people in your videos. Oh my goodness, Nick, these were some wild stories. I feel like maybe because your approach to this and to having these experiences so like laid back, I guess, and so relaxed about it where you're not like immediately freaking out, but you do feel like scared at some of these points, I feel like any spirits that are coming through potentially could feel that energy from you and feel comfortable with showing yourself showing themselves so casually and i feel like that's how you have these like one-time experiences where they're like really quick and you're like oh that was weird and and you can't really explain it but you feel like maybe it could be something and maybe these spirits are just it just feels easier for them to show themselves to you if you know what i mean but those are really creepy. I really, really enjoyed them, Nick. If you have any more, I would love to hear more. All right, guys. Now, moving on to story number two. This one is sent in to me by Arnold Fernandez. He is one of my members of my channel and an amazing supporter. So I'm really excited to read this one. And this one is titled My Ouija Board Experience Story. It says, Hi, Brenda. It's me, Arnold. And I would like to share with you and with your subscribers, my Ouija board story. You can post it on regular channel or to your members only as this story is going to be a long one as I will try to be as detailed as I can be. I hope you enjoy it and I hope the subs enjoy it. Since I had to go through this, I didn't enjoy it at all. And then he titles it, play the board at your own risk. As for me, never again. It was autumn 1992. I was a sophomore in high school sitting in homeroom talking to my friends on what we are going to do for Halloween since it fell on a Saturday this year. Well, we decided to do the same old thing, hang out at someone's house and have a scary movie marathon, pass out candy if we didn't eat it all at all, to kids who are trick-or-treating. We made the plans and agreed to meet up at friend one's house. It's Saturday, Halloween. I dressed up as a nun. Don't ask me why I decided to dress up as a nun. I thought it would be funny. My dad drops me off at friend Juan's house. His parents let me in. They giggled and commented on my costume. I then walked into friend Juan's room where I was greeted by friend two and his girlfriend. Sorry if that was confusing, but I think he's, he's calling his friends by numbers instead of their name. So friend one and friend two and so on and his girlfriend, and by friend two's girlfriend's friend. After all the giggling and catcalling, and friend two trying to bribe me using candy, asking me to do a dance, tease, high schoolers, lol. Friend one walks in holding a box. He said, instead of just watching movies, passing out candy, let's play this. He then holds up a brand new Ouija board that he bought today. Friend two and his girlfriend and girlfriend's friend were down to play. As for me, I was uncomfortable and I was ready to bounce. After the usual name calling, taunting, I reluctantly stayed. Yeah, peer pressure is a B. And I, a move I will regret. Game on, it begins. After friend one's parents left to go to a Halloween party, and after we decided what roles we are going to be, we begin to play. We turned off the lights in the room and lit up a whole bunch of candles. Friend 1 and friend 2's girlfriend, which we'll call girl 1, and her friend, which we'll call girl 2, 
sat on the floor facing each other on the opposite side of the board, with the planchette in the middle. Girl 2 was the person writing out everything that the board spelled out. She used a desk lamp to see the pad of paper. Friend 2 and I are observers. Friend 1 and Girl 1 put their fingers on the planchette, moving it around. They begin to ask questions, questions like, are there any spirits here? And do you want to talk to us? After a lot of giggling and what the hell are we doing, the planchette moved to yes. Shocked and surprised, friend one and girl one gathered themselves, started asking more questions. Girl one asked, me and my boyfriend, are we going to get married after high school? The board responded, no, you will cheat on him. <laughs> Girl 1 had the whatever look on her face. Asked another question, why will I cheat on him? The board responded, you will find him disappointing. They started making jokes and started a giggle towards friend 2. Yeah, he didn't look thrilled. It went like this for a while asking stupid questions. And just in case if you were wondering, we did ask the spirit's name and it spelled out Mr. Tinkle. Like I said, it went like this for a while. Friend 2 and Girl 2 started getting annoyed at Friend 1, being very childish and not stopping with the teasing at Friend 2. Sensing the tension building, me and Girl 2 tried to de-escalate the tension and calm everyone down. Girl 2 came up with the idea to switch places. Friend 1 and Girl 2 said goodbye and the planchette moved to goodbye. So Friend 2 and Girl 2 started to play. Girl 1 now became the note taker. Friend 1 became the observer along with me. And girl 2 asked, Mr. Tinkle, are you still here? The planchette moved to yes. Friend 2 and girl 2 proceeded to ask their questions. And again, temper started to flare up again because now friend 2 is teasing friend 1 and girl 2, or girl 1. As the only one who isn't mad, I tried to calm everyone down. Friend 1 then turned to me and said some colorful choice of words. And when he was finished, items from his dresser fell off that got our attention real quick. Friend 2 and Girl 2 jumped back on the board, and Friend 2 asks, If that was you, Mr. Tinkle, who did that? Mr. Tinkle responded, yes. Girl 2 asked, Why did you do that? Mr. Tinkle replied, You're acting like brats. Hearing that sends a big chill down my back, knowing we were not alone in the room. Friend 1, still pretty heated, started yelling again, some colorful choice of words. This time, we heard a loud crashing noise coming from the living room or the kitchen. We opened the door to find that the lights in the hallways were out. We kept them on. Friend 2 and Girl 2 still sitting on the floor next to the board, their fingertips still on the planchette, and the planchette moving, spelling out, brats, brats, brats. Girl 1 then yelled out, stop calling us that. But again, Mr. Tinkle spelled, kept spelling out, brats, brats, brats. Then Friend 2 said something which he shouldn't have said, pissed off. Mr. Tinkle, the sprite, responded, we heard a loud slam like a door slamming shut and the candles blowing out. Totally scared shitless, me not wanting to play this damn thing with my stupid ass friends are in the dark. We scrambled to find the light switch. Girl 1 found it and turned it on. Now friend 1 and 2 and girl 1 and I began to argue saying we need to end this now. It's getting way out of hand. Friend 1 doesn't agree along with girl 1. They both kept saying that the spirit is just messing with us. It's not going to do anything. We all turned to girl two who was just sitting on the floor writing. She looked up, stood up and walked towards me. She hands me the note and I read it. It said, Arnold, I need to talk to you. Come to the board along with girl two. Mind you, I'm already freaking out, scared out of my mind, wanting this night to be over. There is no way I'm jumping on talking to the spirit. Girl two looking at me with a blank expression, grabs my hand and pulls me to the board forces me to sit down in front of the board as she walks over to the other side and sits down. She puts her fingertips on the planchette, and I did the same. I asked, who wants to talk to me? Friend 1, now being the note taker, read out, it's me, Jason. My fear and dread being replaced by sorrow and sadness, tears started to form from my eyes. I said out loud, it can't be. If you are really my cousin, how did you die? He answered, a bullet went through my head. Shocked and in disbelief, I still, still unsure if I'm truly speaking to my deceased cousin, I ask a couple more personal questions, questions that he would know how to answer. Sitting there with tears 
beginning to run down my face. I'm really speaking with my cousin. He begins to warn me about the spirit we are talking to, that this entity is malicious and it wants to hurt us badly. He also said that I need to put a stop to this, that I'm the only one who can because I'm not pissed off nor angry and that I can stay calm and chill. Jason also said that he doesn't want to see me yet, that it's too soon. Hearing that the fear returned, not only is my life in danger, but my friend's life too. Before saying goodbye, I told my cousin that I loved him and thanked him for looking out for us. He replied saying that he is always with me and always will be and that he is sorry he had to go. In a way, I'm glad I participated. I finally was able to say goodbye because at 8 years old, you don't want to believe your cousin and best friend is gone from your life. Having the strength and courage, thanks Jason, I turned my attention towards the spirit. I asked if Mr. Tinkle is still here, and the planchette started to spell out, cry baby. I knew that the spirit was still here and that the comment was directed towards me. I tell the spirit that we are no longer interested in playing and that we are saying goodbye. To shorten this already long story, I was able to end this night with Mr. Tinkle, but before the spirit let us go, it did give us a final warning. Mr. Tinkle said, if one of you leaves this house tonight, you will not see daylight again. After saying that, Mr. Tinkle moved the planchette to goodbye, ending this session. We all ended up in the living room, not wanting to be inside friend one's bedroom, having a big sleepover because of what Mr. Tinkle said to us. I believe none of us could sleep that night after what we experienced with the Ouija board and a spirit named Mr. Tinkle. Could you? I will send a part two of the story because I believe that Mr. Tinkle visited me in my dream. Or could it be something else? I will let you decide. Oh my goodness, Arnold, that was one hell of a ride. And I'm sorry if it got kind of confusing by calling the people in this story by numbers because it was starting to get like confusing like going back and forth um i feel like it would have been a little bit easier with like fake names um which i could have added in there but it would have been a little bit difficult to keep track of but either way that story was insane and another reason why people should not use ouija boards but i mean at least like one of your loved ones was able to kind of push you away from from the ouija board and get you to stop playing it and they were a real one for helping you out with doing that because maybe the, the thing that you were talking to was was somebody with malicious intent who was going to try and do something to you guys so good thing they did that and good thing that you guys stopped playing it and hopefully that you never ended up or your friends because I, I know you said you would never play it again but hopefully your friends never ended up touching it either but wow what a story and it was super long i was gonna do one more but i think we're gonna end it on that one thank you arnold for the super long and detailed story everybody let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about it and if you would ever play the ouija board now before i do end today's video today's comment shout out goes to this person right here thank you so much for leaving a nice comment as always i really do appreciate it and it really makes my day and if you want to be the next comment shout out all you have to do is leave me a nice comment down below and that's it and yeah guys thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video hopefully i will see you in my next one don't forget to stay safe and be kind bye bye